went up. And That's when Patton went back. Hill 609, they took, yeah. that, it took about four or five days. Then the war was practically. Okay, I'm Richard Finar. I was a young man and I was drafted into military service in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I was sent to Fort Meade, Maryland, or Camp Meade, Maryland at that time for uh, uh, processing. And uh, I was assigned to uh, 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 medical corps training. Uh, I went to Camp Pickett, Virginia. And uh, I was there for about six to eight weeks. And all of a sudden, I was shipped to AP Hill, Virginia to join the 11th Evacuation Hospital, which was one of General Patton's uh, uh, Second Armored Division and, and, and all of that. And uh, uh, from there, uh, we went to Camp Kilmer, where we were processed for overseas, and uh, we received some of our equipment. We had two bags. One was an A bag and the other was a B bag. The A bag went with us, and the B bag joined us uh, later on. Uh, from there, uh, uh, we took a, a long, all day, motorized truck ride all around New York. We finally boarded the uh, USS, U.S. transport ship Monterey. And we slipped out at night and uh, we went north and, uh, and uh, they never told us where we were going, but uh, finally uh, uh, after uh, uh, we joined with the largest armada that ever went to uh, on an invasion. Ships joined us from Great Britain, and uh, uh, we all uh, went towards, and then they told us we were going to North Africa. Uh, French Morocco and Algeria were, uh, we, the invasion was struck, and that was uh, in November. I don't recall the exact date, but uh, I guess it took us about 18 days. <laughs> the, we couldn't land right away, the Jean Bart, which was uh, the one of the French battleships was across the harbor at Casablanca, and they had to tour that away. And then they lined us up, and they were like about four or five transport ships, and we had to go across the, the ships onto the dock. And there we saw General Patton. Uh, he uh, visited us, and he said, well, fellows, you uh, go up to the Italian embassy and uh, set up your uh, hospital unit. We didn't have our equipment, all of it, yet, but." Uh, uh, and then from there, in a few days, we went up to Rabat, which is the capital of French Morocco, and uh, uh, stayed at the racetrack. Uh, and uh, uh, we accepted all kinds of patients, surgical and medical patients. Uh, we even took uh, care of, I understand, the Sultan of Morocco's uh, brother or some, or some uh, he had some kind of an operation. His son, which was, who became the Sultan, who was now deceased, used to be a kid and run around our parks area. Uh, we got our nurses and uh, we stayed there for uh, uh, several months and we, uh, from there we uh, uh, were given uh, orders to go uh, east and uh, we went across the Atlas Mountains. Uh, Actually, we were higher than the clouds at that one time. Uh, we saw women that were doing all the work on the roads. Uh, we went to Sidi Belapis, which is a French Foreign Legion post, and uh, we stayed there overnight. Uh, and then from there, we went into Algeria and uh, up along the coast. Uh, then we had, uh, we set up there temporarily, and then we went down to the Kasserine Pass. and. Uh, well, we, we, we started going down there, and all of a sudden we saw all the tanks and everything coming back. They were, the Germans had uh, begun to defeat us at that point. And, uh, of course, he had General uh, Montgomery, the English uh, commander, uh, chasing him, you know, from Egypt and all that. So, uh, but uh, the heaviest casualties, I think, were at Hill, o Hill 609, and uh, we uh, worked 24 hours for four days, and uh, 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 I, I, I don't uh, remember seeing anybody sleeping except uh, they were sitting down and maybe took a cat nap, but uh, the surgical units were, were very busy. Days after that, uh, the Germans surrendered, and uh, 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 
I remember uh, truck loads, uh, I don't know, convoys and uh, trucks that were carrying the German prisoners back to Algiers for probably uh, transfer to the United States. But uh, uh, we were there for a little bit. We started regrouping and uh, we uh, then were sent to, to Bizzardi, the harbor at Bizzardi, where we got on landing ship tanks and uh, landing craft infantry units. And uh, uh, we made the invasion of, at Lakata in Sicily. And uh, uh, <laughs> an amusing thing, you know, we talk about the army always being followed up some form or other. They put the, the nurses and the doctors on the beach with the infantry, and we came in the next morning uh, and landed. And uh, of course, when we landed, there was already an LST that was bombed. and. Uh, uh, evidently had a funnel bomb uh, and burned the whole ship up. Uh, well, it actually didn't uh, burn it, but I mean there was no life or, or anything there of that sort. We got on the beach and we immediately set up. And uh, from there we went up to Agrigento, uh, we went up to uh, uh, Mount Etna, where the, we, we met with the 9th Infantry Division. Uh, we went over towards Palermo, and then up on the north coast uh, uh, to a place called Cephalu and, uh, uh, and uh, at that point uh, uh, the Germans uh, escaped over from the Cape Bon Peninsula, the toe of, of Italy, the Radio Calabria. Uh, at that point, uh, well prior to that point, uh, uh, sanitation wasn't very well. Uh, we uh, dumped refuse and everything else uh, uh, out in the fields and uh, the flies were so prevalent that even when you lifted a spoon or a fork to your mouth, the flies were right on your food. And uh, I became ill at that point and I had received treatment, but I, you know, this is a 24-hour day job, seven days a week, and uh, you take your medicine and then you keep on going. While I was up at, uh, I think it was in Cephalu, uh, my, uh, I was, uh, I found myself lying on a, on a gurney in the emergency room, and uh, evidently I, uh, I had uh, a diarrhea that uh, wasn't very comfortable, and I was evacuated immediately to Palermo, and then I was that same day I, I got on a, well they put me on a C-47 and it was flown from Palermo to Tunis in Tunisia. And from there I, I was hospitalized, I guess, for three months. Uh, they, uh, the, the recovery was really uh, difficult uh, because uh, the medicine, that they, in fact, uh, the military had penicillin, they didn't know how to use it. Uh, and. Uh, so uh, I, I also had malaria at that time, and uh, and uh, when I uh, was in the hospital, as I said, in Bizzardi for about three months, I was uh, given a, uh, an order to uh, return on a hospital ship, and uh, we went uh, back. It, it took us over ten days to get to Charleston, South Carolina. And from there, uh, uh, I took a train ride to uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and went to Moore General Hospital. Well, I, I started recovery, but uh, uh, it didn't go as well as it should have. Uh, uh, finally, they decided that uh, they would uh, give me a certificate of disability discharge, and uh, Section 2, and uh, I was separated from the service on October 20th, 1944. Uh, at that point, uh, I was being seen by the Veterans Administration for treatment. I went for all types of examinations, and uh, uh, they decided that uh, for rehabilitation, I should uh, enter and get a college degree. And uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania for uh, counseling, uh, for aptitude tests and all that. They, said, why don't you go into the business field? And uh, I said, well, there is a college in Allentown, which is nearby my home, uh, 
College, the Uhlenberg College, and I said I'd like to uh, matriculate there, uh, which I did. Well, in a couple of years, I decided that I really didn't want to get in the business field, so I went to Lehigh University and had a, a other aptitude test, counseling and all that, and they decided I should become a social worker. Uh, I took uh, courses in social work, uh, group uh, work, with, uh, and, and which I, uh, after I graduated, I started working for the YMCA in Allentown, Pennsylvania, as a boys work director. And I was there for several years, and then the Korean War broke out, and uh, I, uh, I decided that uh, well, I, I had an interview prior to uh, uh, my graduation from the American Red Cross, and uh, I, uh, I was told that there were no openings at that time, but when the Korean War broke out, why, uh, I got a call, I was asked if I was interested in going to Korea, and I said that I was, I was, I was ready. <laughs> I felt that I was rehabilitated and uh, physically, and uh, so uh, uh, I was, uh, I went to Washington, I, I took some training courses there, I went to uh, uh, Governor's Island at Fort Jay, and uh, I, I uh, did uh, training there also, and uh, in May of uh, 1951, uh, I was on my way to Korea. And, uh, the war broke out, as you know, in 1950, but in Korea, and uh, uh, we got, uh, we flew uh, uh, from, uh, uh, well, f I flew from Canada actually, Vancouver, Canada. We couldn't get a flight from the state of Washington at McCord Field and uh, flew to Tokyo and uh, uh, we were processed, got all kinds of uh, military equipment. Now you've got to realize that I never, I never uh, carried a weapon. Even as a medic in World War II in, in uh, Europe, uh, we were not permitted to have weapons uh, because of the Geneva Convention. Now, when I went to uh, Korea, I, I never carried a weapon there, even though uh, that was an altogether different circumstance. And uh, I was assigned to the 5th Cavalry Regiment of the 1st Cavalry Division and was assigned to the unit up in North Korea, which is, was quite close to what they call the Freedom Village today. Uh, I had one experience which, uh, you know, I asked where a person was, I had to go out and interview him and I had a report from his family that there was an illness and uh, they wanted to see him. So I, I went, uh, I had a driver who was, who had, uh, had weapons for his own protection and uh, we drove up into an area and we found a tech which was disabled and he was repairing it. All of a sudden I see a and the military police come and uh, an officer and they say, you know, you can be seen by the enemy. And they, uh, of course, I never wore a Red Cross patch because uh, I had the big, what they call the horse blanket uh, patch uh, with the horse on it, the 1st Cavalry Division. And uh, uh, they brought me back to uh, the forward uh, observation point and uh, then again, uh, I was fortunate again that uh, uh, Mortars were coming into the area, and uh, luckily I survived that episode. Uh, before I, I left uh, the 5th Cavalry Regiment, uh, I had an unusual experience. Uh, 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 just before I, I left there, uh, I was in, uh, in the regimental headquarters, and uh, uh, a week after I left, the Chinese overran that regimental command post and destroyed all, the entire battalion that was assigned to guard that thing. And here I was fortunate again to survive that. I came back uh, to Tokyo and I was reassigned to a, an army replacement depot in Sasebo uh, where men uh, were either brought there for uh, onward journey to Korea or on return. Uh, and uh, uh, we had to uh, follow them through because there were a lot of uh, messages that to find men. And uh, so after that, I was um, uh, 
I was transferred to the 187th Regimental Combat Team, which was a, a power troop organization commanded by General William Westmoreland. And uh, uh, I, I was there for a year and a half, and I covered two bases on the island of Kyushu in Japan. I met my wife there, which I married, uh, Mayumi. Uh, she uh, was a victim of the atomic bombing, lost her family, and uh, after a year of, of uh, being with her, I decided to marry her. I went up to the consulate, American consulate, and uh, we were married there. And uh, in May of 1953, uh, uh, we returned back to the United States, where I was uh, reassigned to Fort Dix, New Jersey, and McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. Uh, this, this is a, a brand new career, uh, in a way. Uh, uh, am I getting ahead of myself? I, I think, uh, no, okay. I, uh, I, when I came back to the States, uh, uh, I, I just say I, I had my wife, my, I, my first son was born in, in uh, Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. Uh, I had a daughter born in Tom's River, New Jersey. Another son at Woodbury, New Jersey. And uh, uh, from there I went to the Philadelphia Navy base where I was a director for the, the Marine Detachment. So uh, then from there uh, I was, uh, I went to Iceland for a year and uh, uh, there I, uh, I worked with uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force units at that base. The Army uh, protected the base, the Air Force flew missions. Uh, at that point too, the jets, uh, the aircraft always stopped in Iceland for refueling. Uh, the Navy was flying uh, uh, missions up over the North Atlantic up into Murmansk uh, at that time of the Cold War. Uh, I have a, a, a picture here of uh, my uh, being with a, mass, a chief master sergeant. Uh, he uh, and I worked together to raise funds for the United Way. Uh, and then also uh, uh, the commanding officer of the base, uh, Colonel, I don't recall his last name, but evidently uh, uh, he uh, invited me to his house for dinner. And that was a real big treat. Because, uh, uh, I mean, here I was working, again, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no time off for one year. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, when I returned to the United States again, I was sent to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. I was there for five years, and that was the cargo base and, and the mortuary base for all the deceased servicemen and their families. And, uh, uh, I was there for five years, and then I had orders to go to Vietnam, and uh, I said, well, uh, I got five children. I had two sons that were born in Dover, Delaware at that time, so that's five children. And I said, I really didn't uh, care to, to go to Vietnam at this time. Can, can they find another place for me to go and do a job for the Red Cross? And then uh, I was trained, and I was assigned to what was then called the Fulton, Fulmont Chapter, Fulton Montgomery Chapter of the American Red Cross, with office in Gloversville, Johnstown, and Amsterdam. And uh, I was there for five years, and uh, well, the funding wasn't that great, so I decided that I better resign and uh, go back on the national staff again, and I called Washington. And uh, they said, well, if you want to come back, you have to go to Vietnam, and I said, well, I guess that's what I have to do because uh, uh, I've, I've been in this 15 years and, uh, and I want to uh, continue. So uh, they said, okay. I went to Griffiths Air Force Base for uh, three or four months and, uh, and then I was on my way to Vietnam and uh, got into Saigon. I spent about a week there. They wanted to send me up to the demilitarized zone up and along the border of uh, North Vietnam, and uh, I said, uh, now here again, I'm a little older, and you got to jump in and out of helicopters all the time. And I would 
like another assignment. And they did give, uh, give me an opportunity to go to Northeast Thailand, which uh, uh, was a Royal Thai Air Force base. And uh, that base was uh, a search and rescue base for all the down pilots. And uh, uh, I also went up to uh, U Dorn, uh, which is a Royal Thai Air Force base. And uh, even had a ride with the uh, uh, Royal Thai Navy on a Mekong River. I went up in a patrol boat. and. Uh, went with up, up there to uh, visit a village up along the Cambodian border. And uh, uh, while I was there uh, in, uh, in Vietnam, uh, in Thailand, rather, I had an opportunity to go with uh, the Christian Enlisted Men's Club. They invited me to go along as little R&R, &R, and uh, we went up to Chiang Mai, which is uh, quite close to the Iron Triangle. And uh, we visited that area. We is, uh, visited uh, uh, a leper colony. Uh, we visited uh, the Buddhist temples. Uh, there uh, also is where a lot of the royal Thai, uh, not the royal Thai, but Thai silk uh, products are made. And uh, the sculptures, uh, the religious sculptures and, and all that. Uh, uh, I also uh, had an opportunity to go into a uh, Muslim uh, prayer pl place, you know, where they have rugs on the floor, and, and uh, but there were no prayer services at that time. Uh, that was a very good idea because there again I worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, I was there for one whole year, and then came home. And uh, from there I uh, uh, I went to uh, I was assigned to. Uh, uh, base in Chickley Falls, uh, Westover Air Force Base for a period of time, and then I, uh, I was uh, promoted uh, uh, to become uh, what is known as a National Field Representative, and I had about 30 Red Cross chapters from uh, Hampshire County, which is Springfield, uh, Central Mass area, Worcester area, also in the Northeastern uh, Massachusetts area, and uh, uh, I, I, I did that work almost for 10 years, and finally I, I retired uh, in February of 1981. And, uh, and I've been living here in Fulton County now, in Johnstown. And, uh, uh, that's been my career. Uh, if you want to see a, a couple of other pictures, while I was in Thailand, there's a picture of uh, uh, my interviewing a serviceman in uh, NKP, Nikon Phnom, and uh, he had a personal problem. And I say, I went with a chaplain's group because uh, uh, a lot of men had personal problems, and I felt that uh, they needed to see a chaplain. Uh, this is what I look like. <laughs> and that's quite a difference uh, from when I was uh, uh, in the service. This, this picture was taken while I was uh, 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 on a convalescent leave from the hospital. Uh, and uh, also another picture here, Chevrolet Coupe. <laughs> so that's, a, that's about uh, my story. Uh, I enjoyed uh, my, my career and, uh, well, I, I had a short career in the service, but uh, I. I spent 30 years working for the American Red Cross, and I felt that I, did, I served my country in every aspect of the way. Do you have any qu other questions that you'd like to? What do you think your, um, what do you think your most important time in World War II was? Well, actually, uh, uh, on the invasion of Sicily. <laughs> As, as I said, we, we loaded our ships on a, on a landing ship tank, and uh, I, uh, I was so tired I fell asleep right next to the bulkhead. And everybody was down below deck, and uh, when we landed uh, in Sicily, uh, the Italian uh, people, uh, uh, they greeted us very well. And, uh, but. Uh, being around uh, General Patton was also a, a, a wonderful experience because he invariably always was visiting 
our hospital. He and our hospital commander were friends, and uh, I think he also might uh, have wanted to come up uh, to get good food and things of that sort. But uh, I think that's that's probably my most memorable experiences in World War II. Any other question you might have? I think we're pretty well squared away. You did a good job. Well, thank you. Really good job. Thank you. <laughs> Very well versed. <laughs>